Now in this example, I'm going to show you what happens when we have a overfitting problem going on with using our validation data. So it makes it a valid reason why we need to start using our test data in terms of our results. So I've now got my output or my outcome variable flipped back to the right categorical value. I know that we need to get rid of experience as a variable, so let's do this first analysis and watch what happens when we do our confusion matrix. Now you'll notice that I've got this, this was set up properly so that I've got 0.5 being training, 0.3 being validation, and 0.2 being the test. And so this has been done for this three-way validation. And uh, it turns out we're going to have to use that all the way through because there is going to be some overfitting evidence going on as we start using our validation data because, well, I'll just show you how it works. So basically, we're going to do our predictive modeling, do our k-nearest neighbor, and get our thing set up. We're going to skip ID zip code, and we're going to skip experience as well, and then just take everything else. So these have no helpful information, and we just confuse the model. And then this also was collinear with age, and so that would confuse the model uh, and create problems. And so we're going to put the rest of them now in our X factors, take our three-way validation, and put it into our validation setting. So we should be ready to go. Now in this result, as we look at this, we can see that our error rate here, which is with k equals 3, is 0.3067. But as we go over here, it's worse. Uh, where as of here we have 0.03, over here we have 0 0.035, 0 0.037. And so there is evidence, this is evidence that there's overfitting happening as the validation set is used to figure out what value of K is going to be the very best scenario here. So in this case, we cannot use the validation set as our litmus test for which models are doing better. We really need to go with our test set because this has no evidence, this has no way of having overfit things because it was not used in any way to train or validate the model. Now that brings up the next issue of, well, then which K do I use? You'll notice over here that we have K equals three. And then over here we have our asterisk is k equals 1. But sort of a clue here is that the confusion matrices are all built on what the best k is for the validation set. So that's kind of a clue that that's what is we're being shown here by jump. We're showing what's going on for these confusion matrices for k equals 3. So essentially, when we pop in the confusion matrix for k equals 3, this is the value that's going to show up in our tables because this is what's showing in our confusion matrix is k equals 3. So now when we go over here and start filling out this template then we need to use this test set and so let's go ahead and do that. We have 68 true positives. Interestingly enough this was an example of what happened when I did not exclude that collinear variable and you'll notice it changed the results a bit. It did confuse things a little bit and you're also going to notice here that the overall error rate here when k equals 3 is 0.37 which is better than when I left that collinear variable in. So this is some evidence here that how leaving in collinear predictors can kind of sometimes make your results worse. So I actually did this and then realized I had not done my collinear evaluation, went back and did it and realized I needed to fix it. And so this is what we're, I'm going to show you doing this very first record, doing it that way. So basically at 68 and 31, Right, and then we have 895 and 6. And there is our error of 3.7 that is corresponding with the k equals 3 right here because, again, this is the number that actually corresponds to this test set. So let's review. You do the analysis by looking at your three-way validation or test validation and code on a algorithm like KNN, which uses validation data to actually examine the results in terms of seeing which way is best to interpret things in the results. So KNN is since KNN uses the validation set to figure out what the best K is, 
then the validation set is actually influencing the results. It's not just calculating the results, it's actually influencing the results. So therefore we had to use a test set and see if we were getting some overfitting from the validation set, and we were. The validation set actually performed better than the test set, and so we know that there's some overfitting being in introduced by the validation set. When this happens, the K that will be used here is the very is the best K in the validation set. And jump actually helps remind you of that. The confusion matrix is for the best K equals three, which is what was found in the validation set. So when you put in the test set and not the validation set into your model sort of comparisons, then this is what's going to match up with this 3%. And because this is this is K equals three, and this was found to be the best K. Now, yes, we know over here in the validation set that by doing u and k equals one, it's just a tiny bit better. But this confusion matrix is not shown to us. So basically, we are going to use this one because the tool actually lets us see what the confusion matrix is.